Working Committee of the NNPGs to reconcile and stepping towards bringing peace. Both sides to had another meeting. As per report, both NSN IM and NNPG delegation to fly down to Kolkata on Monday for another round of talks. Sending a strong message over separate statehood demand, Eastern Nagaland People's Organization calls for resignation of all 20 legislatures from the region. Central Executive Council of ENPO reaffirms to stick to August 2022-26 resolution until their demand for Fanchir Nagaland is met. Following the tragic tree uprooting incident claiming two lives in Dimapur's supermarket area on October 12th, Dimapur District Administration starts cutting of trees in the locality. Power supply and vehicular movement to remain suspended from Dansari Bridge till Nagarjan Police Point from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. till October 24 for axing of trees. In over 20 years, the Congress Party voting for its first non-Gandhi chief as Malikarjun Karge and Sashi Tharoor face off for the top post in the Grand Old Party of the country. The results to come out on Wednesday as the elections held for the first since 2000 after Gandhi's decline to be the numero uno. Ukraine's capital city, Kyiv, roped by Russia with kamikaze drones on Monday, reportedly killing at least 15 people. City officials claim three explosions were heard in Ukrainian capital around 6.45 a.m. on Monday as a result of apparent Russian strikes. Hello viewers, I Lomika Chumi welcome you all to NLTV News Now. We will now look into the news in detail. After the joint declaration of the September Joint Accord signed on September 14 this year, the NSCNIM and Working Committee of the NNPGs are likely to hold another joint meeting. As per reports, the Naga political group leaders from both the factions will be leaving for Kolkata on Monday to attend the meeting, though the exact date and venue of the meeting has not been revealed yet. Sources say that the Forum for Naga Reconciliation is felicitating the meeting and seven-member FNR team led by its convener, Rev. Dr. Wati Ayer, has left for Kolkata on Sunday. In the meanwhile, NSCNIM delegation will be led by Vice Chairman Tongmet Wangnao and and Kitovi Jumomi will lead the NNPGs. It may be recalled that earlier, the NSCN IM and NNPGs had reaffirmed its commitment to move forward together in peace and overcome disagreements, besides assigning the three-point joint accord resolution. Eastern Naga People's Organization has reaffirmed that it will stick to its August 26, 2022 resolution which stated that it will not take part in any election process of central and state government until the demand for Frontier Nagaland is fulfilled. Following lack of response from the government, ENPO has demanded a resignation of 20 legislatures of Eastern Nagaland 
from Nagaland Legislative Assembly and all political party workers of both central and state. ENPO also informed that the seven tribal bodies like CKS, KTC, KU, PPC, USLP, TTC, YTCF have endorsed the resolution to mobilize people at grassroots to ensure success of the movement for separate state and an effective plan of action for furthering the movement will be worked out through an emergency CEC meeting. The CEC of ENPO, through another resolution, has also decided not to take part in Hornbill Festival at Kisama from the year 2022 and decided that the state government shall be requested through Eastern Nagaland Legislatures Union to promote mini Hornbill Festival of respective tribes. The House also decided that the people of ENPO will not extend any public cooperation to any group. It is to be mentioned that ENPO on September 7, 2022 directed all seven tribal bodies to ban any election-related campaign in their respective jurisdiction and prohibited massive public mobilization programs until the demand is fulfilled. More than 400 eucalyptus trees adorning Dimapur's supermarket have been started to field for Monday and the cutting process to be continued till 24 October as per an order issued by Deputy Commissioner Sachin Jaiswal on October 13. The order issued after the toppling of trees claimed two lives and injured six others on 12 October. Reportedly, the contract is given to one of the saw mill to take away with trees where the deal has been confirmed with the amount of 5 lakh including labor charges. Following the order issued by District Management and District Disaster Management Authority, vehicular movement has been suspended from Dansari Bridge till Nagarjan Police Point from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m and a total power shutdown imposed during the intervening period for the consumers residing in the supermarket area, circuit house areas and bank colony. Last time, the incident we Manoral Manoral incident the discussion date twenty four steps to the our total amount tha kabi ede 400 gas tha karne ede 4 lakhs tahan pay kure ase. Our in total to 5 lakhs ho jai. 5 lakhs wa laga reason bi ede labor la expenditure kahan milai ne. Sob milai ne tahan 5 lakhs to pay kuro bo. Our apni kahan itu bi question ko bichi hodi bolle mon thayi bo. Our jani bolle mon thayi bo. Itu clear kura bichi ede to jaga de gas alag laga bolle asena naik koi ne bi to bhavna kuro thayi le. Jana idu bo apni kahan ki ifal ede to full gas koi ne tha kato. Itu kahan tahan laga bolle stress stresses la samne pra. Itu laga full gas laga ine manu kahan buha laga. Aram rakun ba wa kuri na ida kahan tahan buhi bo paru. Sandivra, Aru stretches la site, could be business to Aru continue Kuruna Paru, it will be Mohanapi and Kitchenase. Are to Gaskan Tagadu, all flyer which do Dansiri supermarket la area for a Surugurine, Purnavaza la area, Takjala, Luigne, it a half Nagajala junction tak Tagadu, it will put a clear Kurdese. Are they Charsu Gas Taishuine Mohana Roy Barabi and Kitchenase, it will gas to Forest Department la permission Pishite, Tahano to order Lua Pishite, he clear Kurdese. Aru DC, Demapur Pra administration pride to order the Abishite, Ajibra Surugurne, the twenty four talk, it will come to Chulu. In total eight days, or to clear Kurene, the Jagate Aro, it to the Abnihan, it to be Babna Kurago, it vendors can small business vendors can to keep Rubles, Tan Garnavi administration can order Rola in Tagado Hile, Tangi relocate Kurinase, Tangi relocate Kurado supermarket Labido business 
ওপর লাগা বিল্ডিং থাকা তো ভিতর দিয়ে দিকে আছে পরে টেম্পোরারি আর এই তো বিশেষে তাহান লা বিটা মহান গুহা তো এই তো বিটা বানাই কিনে তাহান লা নাম প্রা এলট হবলে আসো কিনে বিহিত মহান জানব পারিছে আর এই তো কুড়ে এটা কার মহান লা এই তো থ্রু দিস ভিডিও মহান মহান লা ভেন্ডার্স বিজনেস করা ভাই বোনে খান কিবি এই তো জানাই দেবো আপনি খান বিজনেস করে নিবি এটা দিকদার পাই থাকলে কন্টিনিউতে না করবি এই তো জায়গাতে আহে বলে কোশিশ না করবি আপনি হেনকে কত জায়গা এলট হওয়া আছে তাদের হি কোপারেট করে নিয়ে আপনি হেন চলাই থাকিবি বোনে মহান এই তো বি আপনি হেনকে রিকোয়েস্ট করে আছে The inaugural service of Naga National Prayer Day was held on Sunday under the aegis of Council of Nagalim Churches at Agri Expo on the team Pray Without Ceasing. CNC President Rev. D. Huitui Zeme read out the message of NSCN IM Chairman Q. Tuku, which made a call for a solemn pledge of allegiance to God's service convenient with Naga people. Tuku urged people to remind themselves that they cannot pursue their political struggle and defend their rights without Christ leading them. He further appealed for pleading with God to intercede that Naga people had the courage and wisdom to transform the dream of Naga nation building. In the meanwhile, a short message on God's purpose for Nagas was delivered by NSN IM Vice Chairman Tongmet Wang Nao. The BJB of Mokokchung District, continuing with its Mandal tour, held a meeting with 24 Anget Yongpang Mandal officials at Eco Camp a Waterfall of Longkong Village on a Saturday. Notably, the program was chaired by Mahila President of 24 Anget Yongpang Mandal, Ozung Minla, whereby the invocation was given by Vice President of District Mahila Mocha, Aranla. Furthermore, short speeches were given by State Council Member of BJB Mokokchung District, Lipok Yangar, and a Secretary of BJB Mokokchung District, Odi Bendang. Meanwhile, the vote of thanks was given by the Chairperson.
The demand for creation of a separate Garoland state seems undeniable as the Garoland State Movement Committee along with the National Federation for New States have urged people from all walks of life to congregate on October 29 for a meeting. Announcing the development, Deputy Chief Executive Member of the GHADC and the Vice President of NFNS, Nikmang C.H. Marak stated that leaders from across India who were part of the different statehood movements would come forward and support the demand for a separate Garoland state. Notably, the organization will be holding a huge gathering at Titeng Aja Playground in Tura on October 29. It is to be mentioned that the development come ahead of the assembly elections which is scheduled to be held in the year 2023 in Meghalaya. It may also be mentioned that Tura is the urban hub of Meghalaya's Garo Hills, comprises five districts and 25 assembly states. Debrugger Kanoi College of Assam has been granted a sum of rupees 5 crore for the construction of a state of the art air conditioned auditorium as Chief Minister of Assam Himanta Biswa Sarma on Sunday made the announcement. CM Sarma was on a day long trip of Debrugger and as a chief guest attended the closing ceremony of the Platinum Jubilee celebrations of the DHS Kanoi College in Debrugger on Sunday. Furthermore, CM Sarma visited the flood-affected Mahan area of Debrugger and inaugurated a statue of Dr. Bupen Hazarika at the Deputy Commissioner's Office, followed by a visit to a football tournament. The war against drug trafficking continues in Assam as three separate cases of drug seizures have been reported on Monday. Authorities on Sunday seized 215 kgs of cannabis from a Maruti Alto vehicle and arrested two persons from the Kazaricha police station area of Karimganj, Assam. On the other hand, 750 grams of heroin were recovered from a vehicle and three persons under arrest from the Amingau area of Assam. Furthermore, 4.65 grams of heroin were seized by authorities from Basista police station, where two drug peddlers were arrested on Monday. The much-awaited Congress presidential elections has begun on Monday and is currently underway to elect party's new president between senior party leaders Malika Arjun Karge and Sashi Tharoor. The polling process has begun at 10 in the morning and will end at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. The results of the presidential poll is likely to be declared on October 19. Over 9,000 Pradesh Committee delegates from the Electoral College will pick the party chief in a secret ballot to decide the fate of the Congress party. It is to be mentioned that with this election, a non-Gandhi president will be elected for the Congress party after 22 years. Meanwhile, Sonia Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi Vadra were seen casting the votes to elect new party president and Rahul Gandhi has cast his vote at the Bharat Joro Yatra campsite in Balari. Several BJB leaders and spokespersons on Sunday shared a parody video 
mocking Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, which was released by the official handle of the BJB on Twitter. Notably, the video mocks Rahul Gandhi and the party's Bharat Joro Yatra and touches upon Congress MLA's quitting in Goa, leaders quitting and joining Gulab Nabi Azad and infighting in Rajasthan, among other things. It may be mentioned that since the start of the Yatra, the BJP has been attacking and taking swipes at it, while the Congress has claimed that it is doing so as it is rattled by the initiative's success. Ahead of Diwali, an ongoing rabbi sowing Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday released the 12th installment of a financial benefit word rupees 16,000 crore to over 11 crore eligible farmers under the flagship PM Kisan scheme. Notably, the government released rupees 16,000 crore on Monday through direct benefit transfer under the 12th installment of the PM Kisan Samman Nidhi plan, which is expected to benefit 10 crore of farmers. Modi, while speaking at PM Kisan Samman Samilan 2022 opening ceremony at the Indian Agriculture Research Institute, said that farmers will get a cheap and quality crop nutrient under one nation, one fertilizer scheme which was launched on Monday. It is to be mentioned that PM Modi inaugurated 600 Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samrudi Kendras, under which the fertilizer retail shops in the country will be converted into PMKSK in a phased manner. One nation वन फर्टिलाइजर इसके रूप में किसानों को सस्ती और क्वालिटी खाद भारत ब्रांड के तहत उपलब्ध कराने की योजना है ये शुरू हो गया आज 2014 से पहले फर्टिलाइजर सेक्टर में कितने बड़े संकट थे कैसे यूरिया की कालाबाजारी होती थी कैसे किसानों का हक छीना जाता था और बदले में किसानों को लाठियां झेलनी पड़ती थी ये हमारे किसान भाई बहन 2014 के पहले के वो दिन कभी नहीं भूल सकते देश में यूरिया के बड़े बड़े कारखाने बरसों पहले ही बंद हो चुके थे क्योंकि एक नई दुनिया खड़ी हो गई थी इंपोर्ट करने से कई लोगों के घर भरते थे जेब भरते थे इसलिए यहां कारखाने बंद होने में उनका आनंद था हमने यूरिया की शत प्रतिशत नीम कोटिंग करके उसकी कालाबाजारी रुकवाई हमने बरसों से बंद पड़े देश के छह सबसे बड़े यूरिया कारखानों को फिर से शुरू करने के लिए मेहनत की है साथियों अब तो यूरिया उत्पादन में आत्मनिर्भरता के लिए भारत अब तेजी से लिक्विड नैनो यूरिया प्रवाही नैनो यूरिया की तरफ बढ़ रहा है आज वन नेशन वन फर्टिलाइजर इसके रूप में किसानों को सस्ती और क्वालिटी खाद भारत ब्रांड के तहत प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी विल किक स्टार्ट द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ प्रधानमंत्री जन आरोग्य मुख्यमंत्री Arutam Yojana Ayushman Cards in Gujarat on Monday. The cards will be distributed with an aim to provide coverage of up to Rs 5 lakh per year to each family for primary, secondary as well as 
territory care hospitalization. The distribution program will be done via video conferencing with the launch of the AB PMJAY Gujarat Integrated MAMAV Yojana with AB PMJAY scheme in 2019 with the name PMJAY MA and the beneficiaries under MAMAV and AB PMJAY became eligible for co branded PMJAY MA cards. The Prime Minister will kickstart a distribution of this card after which 50 lakh coloured Ayushman cards will be distributed to all beneficiaries of Gujarat. A case of love jihad has come to light from Madhya Pradesh as police on Sunday registered a case against a person who disguised himself as Hindu and allegedly raped a woman. The disguised person has been identified as Muhammad Akram, who impersonated his identity as Amar Kushwaha and raped a woman after taking a friendship with her. Police station in charge of Madhya Pradesh, Sudhir Arjaria said that the man has been arrested as he introduced himself as Amar Kushwahara to the girl and raped her in a hotel. Furthermore, the accused pressurized the girl to change her religion for marriage after revealing himself as Muhammad Akram. Police have registered a case under the Madhya Pradesh Freedom of Religious Act 2020. A Suomoto cognizance and an affair have been registered by the Delhi police against some unknown persons after a video went viral in which few men are seen attempting to enter old woman Mirinda house in Delhi. The incident occurred on Friday when Mirinda House College in North Campus organized a Diwali gathering. Deputy Commissioner of Police North Delhi stated that some students tried to climb the walls but were prevented during the Diwali Mela and the program went peacefully. However, a video of men trying to scale the wall to enter the college went viral on which Delhi police on Monday said that a Suimoto cognizance of the matter and a case is being lodged. <laughs> Mizoram police on Sunday arrested a 27-year-old Myanmar man in Icewall for possessing 10 grams heroin worth rupees of 5 lakh. The accused identified as Tai Liang Chi is a resident of Tahan in Myanmar. Mizoram police stated that the contraband was concealed in a soap case. Meanwhile, the accused has been booked under relevant sections of Narcotics, Drugs and Physiotropic Substances Act and Foreigner Act. It is to be mentioned that nearly 40 Myanmar nationals have been arrested this year in drug-related cases. Ukraine's capital city, Kyiv, was attacked by Russia with kamikaze drones on Monday. Kyiv officials informed that at least three explosions were heard in Ukrainian capital around 6.45 a.m. on Monday as a result of apparent Russian strikes. One of the blasts was in Shivchen Kivsky district in a center of Ukrainian capital. Emergency services have been sent to the site immediately 
after the explosion took place. It is to be mentioned that Moscow used Iranian supplied drones in the strike against Kiev. Vincia, Odisha, Zaporizhia, and other cities in recent weeks. With an aim to strengthen bilateral relations between both countries, Botswana's Foreign Minister Lemgong Kwape reached India on Monday. Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Aridam Abachi informed that Kwape has received a warm welcome from the Indian officials in New Delhi. The minister, who is on a six-day visit to India, will hold series of meetings at Agra, Vadodara and will meet External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar in Gujarat. It is to be mentioned that India established the diplomatic relations with Botswana immediately after its independence in 1966 and opened its diplomatic machine in Gababon in 1987 and Botswana established its machine in New Delhi in 2006. Amid the recent escalations of the Russia-Ukraine war, France Minister of Armed Forces Sebastian Licornu announced on Saturday that President Emmanuel Macron has backed his proposal for training Ukrainian soldiers. The minister informed that France will supply Crotail air defense system and train around 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers. Likornu also added that there is a possibility of donating surface-to-surface -surface missiles and six more units of artillery units to Ukraine in order to help the country from Russian attacks. A fiery spell for Mohammed Shami and a brilliant knock from KL Rahul helped India to defeat Australia by six runs at their home ground in a warm-up match of ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2022. Pacer Mohammed Shami backed a stunning three-wicket haul and Bhuvaneshwar Kumar scalped two wickets and for Australia, Aaron Finch played the captain's knockoff 76 runs of 54 bowls, while Michelle Marsh scored 35 runs in 13 bowls. Indian opener KL Rahul smashed 57 runs of 33, while Surya Kumar Yadav scored 50 in 33 bowls to guide India to set a total of 186 while losing 7 wickets. The Asian Football Confederation on Monday announced that Qatar will be hosting the Asian Cup 2023 after beating the competition from South Korea and Indonesia. China was the tournament's original host but has pulled off earlier this year as the country follows a zero-COVID policy. AFC President Sheikh Salman congratulated the Qatar Football Association for their successful beat and appreciated the Asian football family for the commendable proposals. Notably, the 2023 Asian Cup will be held in June and July 2023.
There viewers, that's all we have for now. Keep watching Nagaland TV.